a very good afternoon to all of you today uh, we are going to study the voltage ratio what will be the voltage ratio and the impact of that voltage ratio the duty ratio on the output voltage so i think in the previous lecture i have discussed the basic formation of a chopper circuit now i would like to express something about the canonical switches and once the canonical switch is clear then i can straight away move forward to the derivation of average output voltage that is going to come in this present lecture so before progressing i would like to say that this this switch okay along with this diode and this inductor so in totality i can say these three components it's clear yes this triode or what way i can say that this triode let me see if this is the diagram i have presented in this yes this is the diagram connection is are made the voltage is shown so i would like to show that voltage to you okay, so this have a guess when this switch is connected i think the role of each device is quite clear that i have uh, earlier elaborated that the inductor will first of all lower down the current ripple first part the capacitor will lower down the voltage ripple the capacitor does does that part by by passing or letting the harmonic component to pass through it okay uh, now one more thing very important thing is that these three the switch the freewheeling diode and the inductor together form the canonical switch these form the canonical switch okay and merely by interchanging these three switches if you are going to interchange these three switch then we are sure to get the other two converters that is the buck converter and the buck boost converter yes simply interchange this thing it means if okay wait a minute okay if instead of this switch we put put an inductor okay here is an inductor and this part i will put the switch and the diode will this will simply get rotated up this will get rotated and this will add at this point so in the first part where the configuration is switch diode switch diode inductor in the second part the inductor comes from this part to this part the switch comes from this part to this part and the diode simply rotates from this part to this part obviously the diodes polarities are interchanged reversed so this will comprise of the this will form the buck boost converter so this will form the boost converter and once again the rotation is done that is this switch remains just like that the inductors come in the here okay buck boost and diode diode will get connected in its reverse polarity this will form the buck boost converter obviously the voltage output will be negative now coming back to the derivation topic we can very well see or we can very well observe that when this term is connected this voltage gets connected across the load then the voltage at this load terminal will be high and if we are considering inductor at this point then the drop across inductor will be vs minus v not obviously when the connection is made okay that will be vs minus v not now when the switch is not connected then the voltage drop across inductor will be minus v not i think i am quite clear to this point it will minus v not so when we will apply the volt second balance then we will get the equation that is the voltage applied during a t on time 
that is Vs minus V naught into T on plus minus V naught into T off should be equal to zero. And when we will equate this thing to zero, then we will get V naught equals to dVs. I think it is quite clear. We are sure to get V naught equals to dVs, meaning the output voltage. This ratio that I am going to show you right now. This thing. This. You are sure to obtain this thing. That is V naught equals to dVs. Okay, where D is specified here. That is T on by T. Okay, now if you move further, we can also calculate the RMS output voltage for the concerned waveform. As we all are well versed that the RMS value will exist for only zero setting on time period, so the equation comes out to be Vs for the time period T on. We will put T on equals to dT, and when we will put dT, then obviously it will become dT will cancel out. And we are left with under root D into V S. That is the thing that we observe. Now, if somebody asks us that what will be the effective input resistance, then it is very again very easy to answer this problem. That we can say it for by two part. First of all, we can get the input current, okay, source current, okay, and that source current we will divide the source voltage by source current, and we will get the Resistance. That's very easy. And source current for a buck converter is very easy to decide. Yes. If we know I naught, then source current will only flow for a time period D. Source current will be equal to switch current. Okay. The so switch current is if you are looking at RMS value of switch current, it is under root D into. If you are looking at average value, then it is D into I naught. I naught is that. Average output. Current. We will. I will derive all of these things in the upcoming lectures. But I think this part is quite clear. Now, uh, turn on and turn off amperage are quite clear. Vs is also quite clear. Okay. I will again discuss this power circuit because this power circuit is very important. That I was. I was discussing with you. And this is the switch. Have a look at this. Two types of DC to DC buck converters are shown here. Okay. Uh, before moving to into this part, I would also like to express one more thing. That is the ampere current balance. Just look at this L. Again, due to this L on this C, I am telling you. The voltage across capacitor will be nothing but equals to V naught. I should say, are you getting this feel that the voltage across C is nothing but the V naught? V naught is the same voltage that is going to be get applied across C. And as this voltage V naught is itself a DC voltage, or I can more precisely say that it's a DC voltage, and it will have ripples, and those ripples are periodic. It will rise. It is fall. It will rise. It will fall. Okay. I will like to show you that waveform. That is here. Yes. This is the. Okay. Let me see. This is the waveform. Exactly. It will fall. It will rise. It will fall. It will rise. We will come to discuss this part later on in our studies. So that repetitive nature. But what I can say that that DC nature will help in the that will be giving us a periodic voltage, and as the voltage is periodic, that the current through the capacitor will also be the current ampere second balance should hold on the capacitor, and that will lead to a relation between inductor current and output inductor current and output current, and that is very important. I would love to discuss those part. I hopefully we will discuss that in the analysis of DC to DC converters in our coming lectures. But I think till this point we are quite clear. I hope everything that basic structures, the device operations. Okay, one more thing. In modern day choppers, thyristors are not used. In the earlier generation, thyristors were used, but right now 
thyristors are not used instead of thyristors we are using mosfets be very particular about it that we are using mosfet then our choppers more upon this in the upcoming next lecture thank you